a welcome to the show. A man is running through a dark forest in Ireland. He seems frightened despite constantly encountering signs with the words point of no return in various numbers, indicating either directions or distances to something. However, he fails to escape. Darkness quickly envelops the surroundings. A flock of birds flies overhead and he falls into a pit. In the next moment, an invisible force grabs him and drags him away. Elsewhere in the country lives an artist named Minna who works in a pet store. One day, her boss asks her to deliver a rare parrot to a zoo in a neighboring city, and Mina agrees. She takes the bird home for the night. There, she tells the parrot that her mother died 15 years ago. Suddenly, the bird starts to respond. In the evening, Mina puts on a wig and goes to a bar, where she introduces herself to a guy with a fictitious name, claiming to be a ballerina. In the morning, Mina apologizes to the parrot for her behavior, saying the real her would probably not be liked. Finally, the pair set off on their journey. On the way, her sister Lucy calls, reminding her that she has family and nieces who love and await her. Mina continues driving and eventually ends up on a road leading into an old dark forest. Unexpectedly, the car breaks down and stalls, and the connection also mysteriously cuts off. Taking the parrot's cage, Mina steps onto the road to seek help, but the forest is dark and empty. When she returns to where she left the car, the road is deserted. Mina continues to wander through the quickly darkening area, talking to the bird to keep herself cheerful and suggesting they name it Darwin. Suddenly, she notices a woman running past and decides to follow her. Mina catches up with her near a small forest cabin, and the woman, opening the door, orders her to come inside quickly if she wants to live. Naturally, Mina rushes into the cabin. The elderly woman is named Madeline. She has been living here for some time with two other young people, Ciara and Daniel. She immediately orders Mina to stand in front of a mirror because the watchers cannot enter inside but observe from outside, coming every night after sunset. Standing by the mirror, Mina suddenly hears sounds like applause. Madeline confirms her suspicions. The watchers are applauding the appearance of a new object. In the morning, Mina announces that she intends to leave. Although the others assure her it's impossible, she heads into the forest. Madeline catches up with her, explaining that the forest causes hallucinations. But it is possible to survive here. The signs scattered throughout the forest mark the boundary from which a person can reach the cabin before dark. But if you go beyond the boundary, there will be no way back. They were made by a man named the Professor. But where he is now, no one knows. That night, Daniel puts on a show for the Watchers, presenting them with the newcomer, but they ask her to behave as usual. Meanwhile, Sierra turns on the music and dances, as she does every evening. Mina, on the other hand, finds discs with recordings of Love Search TV shows. In the morning, she and Sierra go to gather medicinal herbs, because her missing husband asked the girl to take care of Daniel. Then the man went to search for a way out and disappeared. Sierra explains that recently they found strange burrows scattered throughout the forest. That's where the Watchers go during daylight hours. She believes she has been in the cabin for almost five months. Later, Madeline announces the safety rules. Never leave at night, never open the doors for anyone, always try to stay in the light. A strange life begins with entirely identical days. Mina watches endless shows and often stands staring into the mirror. One day she knocks on it and immediately there is a knock on the door. Madeline orders everyone to freeze and everything stops. The next day she and Daniel go hunting. The boy tells her that Madeline used to work at the university, so she considers herself a know-it-all. But she has been living here the longest. Daniel himself has been in the cabin for eight months, but has never seen anyone. After listening to the boy, Mina convinces Daniel to help her explore a burrow. Using a rope, Mina descends, explores it, and finds old items, newspapers, toys, pieces of electronics, and an old bicycle, which she ties to the rope and sends up. But then strange sounds, similar to those heard at night outside the cabin walls, echo from the darkness. Mina screams and the rope falls at her feet. Climbing out into the light, Mina leaves the dangerous place, and they calmly examine the items. With the bicycle, it might be possible to escape from here. But Madeline has a rather strange reaction to this. Meanwhile, Daniel manages to assemble a surveillance system from the found pieces of electronics and installs a camera by the door. At night, everything goes as usual. Ciara dances when there is a knock on the door, and Daniel suggests that a person has come. Madeline forbids opening it, but they hear the voice of Ciara's husband. Ciara tries to prove that it is John by asking him what book she is reading, but he does not answer. Although they bought this book together on his advice, the man begs to be saved from death. Sierra asks to look into the camera, but when he leans towards it, something drags him into the forest. Immediately, there is a knock on the mirror stronger than ever before. 
Madeline stands in front of the people, as if shielding them, and the knocking stops. In the morning, Madeline throws the bicycle into the burrow, demanding that they no longer break the rules. Later, Mina recalls her sister and mother, who invited the girls for a car ride. The weather was beautiful, and Mina opened the window. Her mother asked her to close it because the wind was bothering her, but Mina didn't listen, mimicking her mother, who got distracted from the road, in the tragedy happened, for which Mina still feels guilty. Winter soon arrived. The days grew shorter, the nights colder, and food became increasingly scarce. Quarrels began to flare up among the cabin's inhabitants. One day, Sierra left for the forest. Mina caught up with her, and she confessed that she felt John was real. She runs to the house from where Daniel's screams are heard, angry with Madeline and Mina, refusing to let them inside. The women hide under a tree and soon see lanky, spider-like monsters emerging from the forest, approaching the cabin window, and making terrible shrill noises. The watchers stare at Daniel and Ciara while Mina and Madeline wait for them to leave so they can return to the cabin. When they do, the women rush to the door and beg to be let in. Daniel refuses, and then Mina tells him about her guilt towards her mother. She asks him to understand that he will suffer all his life, realizing that he is responsible for the death of people. The doors open. The four of them immediately stand in front of the mirror, hoping to convince the watchers that they are in place. Madeline admits that she tried to protect them from certain things. She used to teach history and mythology, and unlike them, came here voluntarily. Only here did she realize how dangerous this place was. Once she hunted alone and saw herself at sunset. Not an exact copy, but very similar. The Watchers are an ancient species with many names. Changelings, winged ones, fairies. They study people to impersonate them, and they will never let them leave. Knocks and the voices of the cabin's inhabitants are heard outside. Then Daniel finds a hatch in the floor, which they didn't even know existed. Descending, they discover a well-fortified and equipped living space filled with food and equipment. Mina turns on an old computer, and a video recording shows the face of the professor, whose real name was Rory Kilmartin. He was the first to study the Watchers and tried to learn about their origins. In 1979, the scientist found this place, which he called Wonderland. Every evening, the Watchers came to his window and studied him. For many years before this, the professor's colleagues laughed at him, not believing his tales. Then he built this bunker, using the labor of men from nearby remote villages. He chose the lonely or those with bad habits so that their disappearance would not attract much attention as every evening he convinced them to have dinner outdoors. Hiding inside, he watched the Watchers deal with them. Thus, this bunker was built on blood. One day, a Watcher appeared before him in the form of a girl with red hair. She was very different from the others, as if she were unique and looked curious and harmless. That's when he realized that if he unlocked the secrets of the fairies, he might even conquer death. He did the impossible, lured this girl into a cage and began experiments on communication, trying to befriend her. She changed form, sometimes turning into a frightening creature with long arms, but seemed to listen to him. Gradually, she became close and understandable to him, but now the professor realized he had achieved nothing significant and was ready to end his life. He hit a boat by the river, and this is the only way out. Just follow the birds. He asked the survivor to go to his university office and destroy all the documents found there. And now he will go to her and stay here forever. In the last recording, they see Kill Martin climbing up. Gunshots are heard, and then all is quiet. Realizing that this is their last night in the forest, Sierra turns on the music and invites Daniel to dance. But he seems upset about leaving. He says his family is dysfunctional, and he has nowhere to return to. Then the girl offers to let him stay with her for a while until they find him a good occupation and place to live, as they have become good friends. In the morning, the group sets out to escape, guided by the signs and Mina's parrot, whom she asked to lead them. Soon they reach a massive stone disc in the ground, covering the entrance to a huge tunnel. Madeline explains that this is where the last representatives of the ancient fairy race were locked up, who were once very friendly with humans. After many centuries, they managed to surface, but now the friendship has turned into hatred. They stay here because they are held by magic, so they need to run far away. They walk all day. Dusk falls, but there is no river or boat in sight. It starts raining, and they fall into despair when they see huge flocks of birds flying in one direction. They run after them and reach the river. The women rush to the boat when Daniel hears screams behind him and sees John. He returns for him, rejoicing that the man survived, but it turns out to be a changeling. 
The women scream, begging Daniel to run, but he doesn't hear and dies at the hands of the Watcher, who then takes on his form while Madeline, Mina, and Ciara sail down the river. The women wake up in the boat and see that they have returned to civilization. They stop a bus and ride to the city, listening to music and only now realizing that it's over. Later, Mina goes to the university where Kilmartin worked, posing as his niece to enter his office and fulfill his last request. There, she finds more documents, photos, and a recording in which he discusses the fairies and the fact that there are still half-blood children in the world. Mina finds a stack of photos and, looking at them, seems very surprised. In the evening, Mina goes to Syra's house, showing a photo of Madeline from the professor's belongings, explaining that it is his wife who died several years ago. So the Madeline they lived with in the cabin was a special fairy capable of moving during the day. It was she whom Kilmartin caught. He couldn't kill her, and she took on Madeline's form to return to civilization. Then a car pulls up to the house, and the real Ciara gets out, while the one she's talking to is actually a fairy. Realizing she has been exposed, the fairy knocks Mina out and changes shape again, turning into Daniel. They just want to live like other species, but due to human hatred, they are forced to stay underground. The fairy turns into Kilmartin and goes to Mina. In the house, the fairy transforms into her and prepares to kill the girl. But Mina says that there are others like her somewhere because she is half human and acknowledges that it was unfair of humans to banish the fairies from their world. The fairy softens and spreads her wings, admitting that Mina might be right, and she flies away. Mina revives Ciara. Later, she reunites with her twin sister Lucy, finally forgiving herself for their mother's death. She tells her about her experience, admitting that she still sees Madeline appearing in the forms of other people. Her nieces arrive to show Mina a drawing of her and Darwin, whom she still keeps as a pet. Meanwhile, outside, a girl with red hair appears, looking at their apartment windows and taking on the form of a girl with a strange face. This is probably not a horror movie, but rather a scary bedtime story when a child doesn't want to sleep and asks for something frightening. Everything builds up slowly and tastefully, but the ending unfolds somewhat mundanely, although mysteriously.